Hey, this is Justin Johnson. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to cover one of my favorite slide guitar songs of all time. Uh, one of the most classic and most uh, imitated slide guitar riffs and slide guitar players of all time. Uh, Elmore James and the song Dust My Broom. I'm going to teach this for you on the four string cigar box guitar. I've got this one right here that was built by Charles Atchison. And I'm going to show you how to play this whether you have a four string or a three string and also whether you have a fretted cigar box guitar or an unfretted cigar box guitar. So let's get started. Okay, let's start up by getting tuned up. Whether you have a three string or a four string, we're going to be in an open G tuning. This four string, I'm using the middle four strings from a six string pack, the A, D, G, and B string. I'm going to start at this low note. We're going to tune that to a G. Second string is a D string. I'm going to tune that to D. Third string is a G, an octave above the bass string. If you have a three string guitar, those are going to be your three strings. If you have a four string, let's get that high note, that's going to be a B. Okay, now this song essentially gravitates around this one riff, and I'm going to play it for you right here. So that's the main riff of the song. This is played over and over again, and basically it, uh, it's part of the intro, and it also is the riff that's played in between each of the vocal lines. So it starts out, it's on the middle two strings, and it's on the twelfth fret. You're going to slide up, sort of uh, slide up, doesn't matter what fret you slide up to, but slide up quickly to the 12th fret. And the reason I like sliding up, I think it gives you more of that classic uh, sort of Elmore James, nice bluesy, uh, almost like a violent kind of attention getting uh, effect when you slide up like that. If you don't slide up, it sounds like... Again, sliding up. And you want to sort of shake it, give it a little vibrato. When you shake it like that, that's called vibrato. And when you're using vibrato, a lot of times people, when they first start using vibrato with a slide, they move just their finger or their hand, and it's difficult to do that way. What you want to do is move your, your forearm back here. Move it from your shoulder, really, and your elbow. Get your whole arm involved in that vibrato. And you want to be going around the fret. When you put the slide on the strings, you want that slide to be right over that 12th fret, over the metal part of that fret, right in the middle. And you want it to vibrato above and below that fret. So the center of your vibrato is right on that note. And when I play that, what you're doing, you're playing those middle two strings over and over again. And notice I'm doing a, a, a heavy pluck with my fingers. Doesn't matter if you use your index or both fingers, but I'm muting the bass string and the high string with my pinky and my thumb. And the reason I'm doing that is because I only want to play those middle two strings, but I don't want to, to be gentle with them. I don't want to play them like this. You know, I really want to swat them with my finger. And when I'm swatting them, I'm actually hitting both, uh, both of those muted strings. I'm hitting all four strings. But you're not hearing them because they're muted. So again, you want to mute those strings there. 
And you know, Elmore James didn't use this approach, but he wasn't playing the three string or the four string cigar box guitar in the recording of this song. So he was using a pick or using his fingers and really hitting away at that. You want to get that same effect, you know, that, that almost, again, violent effect of plucking those strings really hard. But you're going to have to mute those strings to accommodate for that. And then after you hit those strings, you kind of slide down and then let that open note ring out, those middle two again. And then it's a slide up from the second fret to the third fret twice. So let me try and play that really slow. Again, pay attention to my muting down here and pay attention to when I'm sliding. So I'm sliding up to that 12th fret, applying some vibrato, going down, and then sliding up to the third fret and then open. Try it again. One more time. After we're done with that riff, then we go into this rhythm part. There's this rhythm part that stays consistent through the song. It's a very driving song. And what I'm doing right there, it's, um, it's what I like to call, it's like a train riff, you know? Like imagine a train rolling through and kind of chugging along through the song. And when I do a rhythm part like that, I like to start don't even worry about your left hand or your fretted hand, whether you're right-handed or left-handed. Don't worry about this hand yet. Let's get a good rhythm going. So I'm just going to mute these strings here. Let's get that. You can pluck it either down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Or you can do all down strokes. notice it's not it's not a straight beat it's got a nice syncopation to it it's got that that backbeat pull and what you're going to do with your left hand or your fretted hand is on that D string on that second string and again this is the same whether you're playing a three string cigar box guitar or a four string in this G tuning you go um, and put your finger on the second fret of the D string and you start open so second open second so get that under your hands and kind of get comfortable with that before trying to incorporate the two riffs together now I'm going to show you how I'm incorporating those two riffs together right now. So you start with that first riff, two, three, four. You see, it's it's um you got to feel that underlying train rhythm the whole time. That's that's the rhythm that's underlying that, that riff the entire time. So whenever you're not playing that slide riff, go to that train riff. And then after you play that much, then you go, it's almost the same slide riff as you did before, but this time it's gonna be a little bit different. And you just all, the only difference really is the amount of times you play those two parts, the 12th fret and the 3rd fret part. The first time you played... And then the second time... You go 1, 2, 3, 4... Open... So let's play those that, that first part 
nice and slow. We'll do both of those parts, that train rhythm in between. One, two, three, four. Okay, at this point, then we're going to take that train riff that we did and we're going to move it up to the fifth fret. And we're going to play that same train riff up here five frets up. So we're going to bar that fifth fret. Now what I mean by bar, if you're unfamiliar with that term, is you're going to take your index finger, it's almost like a bar going across that whole fret, you're going to push down every one of those strings. And it's almost like moving that nut up five frets. You're going to put all those strings down. And now instead of a G chord, you're playing a C chord. And so since we were doing that train riff down here, open two, open two, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go two frets above on the D string. See with my pinky here? So on the D string, you go to that 7th fret. And get comfortable with it. A lot of times if you're not applying enough pressure with your bar chord, it's because you're not hitting it at the right angle and you're, you're making your hand and you're making your fingers cramp up and apply that pressure at an incorrect angle. So move, move your hand down. You know, sometimes people have their thumbs up here when they're trying to do it or you know, move it around until it gets comfortable. So now that we're getting this train rhythm here on the fifth fret, let's um let's say you don't have frets. Let's say you have a fretless three string or four string guitar. You don't actually have to do that train riff. You can just bring the slide up to the fifth fret, again right over the metal part of the fret, and strum that same rhythm. You're still playing the same chord, so you're still playing that driving rhythm with your right hand, or your, your strumming hand, over that C chord. You don't have to play that train riff exactly. Instead you can play... So you still get the same point across. Harmonically and rhythmically you're still telling the same story. So after you play that riff up there, you're going to play it one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, and then you go back into the same riff you were playing at the beginning. And then we go to what's uh, called the, the turnaround in a 12-bar blues progression. You're going to go up to the seventh fret and either do that train riff and then the fifth fret. So again, seventh fret, fifth fret, and then back open. Alternatively, if you have a fretless and you want to play that with the slide, you do the slide at the seventh fret, which is a D, down to the fifth fret, which is a C, and then open. Try that turn around with the slide. Three, four. And then we'll do this riff at the end. We'll put a tail on it here. And that's um, starting with your G, your third string. So, and then the third fret on the D string and then the G again, then the 2nd fret on the D string, then the G again, then the 1st fret on the D string, and then open. So really you're just playing that D string, 3, 2, 1, open. Again. And if you have a fretless, you can play it 
that's on the D string by itself, just the D string, you say five, three, two, one, open. So again, I'll do it fretted, and then I'll do it fretless with the slide. Here's fretless. And then once we hit that last note, we go up to that seventh fret, that D chord. And then we start over. So let me play that whole 12 bar blues progression, that whole intro 12 bar blues progression, one time, nice and slow. Let's do it together. One, two, one, two, three, four. the fretless let's do it like that so I'm just going to use the slide we're not going to use our fingers fretting anything one two one two three four So that's the entire intro. And the great thing about this song when you're learning it for beginners is that when you start singing the lyrics or if you're playing with someone who's singing the lyrics, you don't have to learn any new riffs. All you do is switch the positions of the slide riff and that train-like rhythm riff. Here's what I mean by that. On the intro, you start out with... And then you go to... So you start with the slide riff, and then you go into that rhythm riff. When you're playing over the singing, you start with the rhythm riff, and then you play the slide riff. So I'll play through one time the rhythm now. You start open, and then the fifth fret, and then the slide riff. Fifth fret. And then the slide riff. And then the turnaround. And then the ending. And that ending, instead of doing the on the when you're on the verses when you have the singing going on you just end it with that slide riff again so you're playing the same riffs over and over again you're just doing them in different places and that's what makes this song a, a great song for beginners you get that nice simple riff that nice simple slide riff you can play it on a three string you can play it on a four string you can play it with frets you can play it with just a slide it's just a great blues song that works in all those different contexts and you can just have fun with it, you know, uh, practice it a little bit, and you start having fun with it. If you want to get an extended lesson on this Elmore James style of slide playing for the four string guitar, I've got a DVD out which is slide guitar for the four string and the six string guitar. It teaches you a lot more about the nuances of playing slide, how to hold the slide, how to get good vibrato, different types of vibrato, how to play over several different blues styles, and how to dive deeper into this Elmore James style playing, including going over a few different tunings that Elmore James used and how to apply those to the four string guitar. 
Once again, I'm Justin Johnson. Thanks for watching. See you next time.